In this video I'm going to explain the basic operation of the Gatorag G96 gearbox as fitted to the um, Porsche 996 Carreras. So this is the internals of the gearbox. Here we have the input shaft, this goes into the clutch, then the drive goes down the input shaft and then across through to the output shaft via whichever gear is selected. So each of these gears are in pairs, starting off with first and second at this end, then third and fourth, fifth and sixth. For each pair of gears, one gear is rigidly fixed onto one shaft and the other gear is free to rotate. So if you look on here, these aren't meshing. Normally these are being constant mesh, so this would always rotate, but they're currently not selected and the, the shafts are apart, so these can freely rotate. Here we have the reverse gear, which has an extra idler used to change the direction. The idler is in the nose of the gearbox in there. Um, so reverse, first and second are actually part of the input shaft. The other fixed gears are on the output shaft, third, fourth, fifth and sixth, which are a press fit on the shaft. Each gear is selected using these selectors here. So the selector forks will move these across are quite stiff to do by hand to select the gear just uh, see if I can push that across it's easier with two hands so there you see that's now selected so now that gear is fixed onto the shaft and won't rotate so in this case that would the car would now be in fifth gear these selectors are moved by selector forks these forks are in, in place on here. So there's two operate on each shaft. They are operated by cables. There's one cable which goes here. This one rotates on here to select which selector fork is actuated. There's a slot on there, so that will be the first, second fork, third and fourth, and then over to this side for fifth and sixth and reverse. So that's moved by the ratchet in there. And this is, um, spring loaded so that it, it only stops at certain locations so it's got detent on it for that and then this whole section is moved up and down so when this moves up and down it moves the selector forks up and down and that is operated by this lever in here which again has detent so that would be in the neutral position then that would I'm not sure which way around they are but either first or second there first or second there or third fourth fifth sixth so as the gear lever is moved, one of the cables will move this up and down and the other one rotates it to select the forks. There's also a flat plate on here, which when a selector fork is moved, it will move that plate so that no other forks can be moved. So it basically locks it in position. So at the moment, none of the forks are pressed, but if I move one of the forks like that, then the plate moves so that no other forks can move, so you can't have more than one gear selected at a time. So there we have the drive through the input shaft, across whichever gears are selected, through to the output shaft, then from the pinion onto the differential, and then out to the wheels. Now this particular gearbox is a damaged one, we've got damage on third gear here. A common problem on these gearbox is with um, second gear pop-out, which is where there's damage to the teeth on second gear, on the um, the bolt rings or on the actual gears themselves. It's on these on these teeth here, which are used to select the gears. These can these can wear, and you can see the nice shape on those. You can end up with um, deformation on those, and then it won't stay in gear properly. So that's a that's a common problem with here. Also on the um, pinion bearing, which is this bearing here, can get noisy, so this has to be replaced. Unfortunately, to replace this, um, this pinion is part of the output shaft. So to replace this bearing here, I have to completely disassemble this part of the shaft. These gears come off relatively easily with a press, so that's um, uh, reverse, first and second. Um, these ones, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, because these are the fixed ones on the shaft, um, they're they're not on splines. They're actually just a press fit onto the shaft, and these require a lot of force. So you need a large press, something like 80 tons, to get those off. And they can only be fitted a total of three times, 
and they're fitted once onto the shaft at the factory so you've only got two other goes at it. Um, so the, the, the parts for the, the synchros for first and second are relatively easy to do. The pinion bearing does need a, a large press to do it. So there you go, those are the, the basics of the G96 gearbox. Um, this is from a Carrera 2, the same version um, for a Carrera 4 has an extension on the output shaft here which then goes up to the front of the car for the front differential. That's the main difference. So if we look on the on the nose of the gearbox where that fits you'll see this is blanked off at the end so that's where the output drive would normally go up to the front differential. And the, the differential fits in this plate here and then there's a cover plate which goes on here to hold the differential in place.